Joining us now is Kachi Ophia to catch the flow of the program with stories trending around the world. Hello, Kachi. How are you? Good morning. Oh, yeah, Kachi. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Yes, yes, good I'm morning. I'm very well. Absolutely. I hope you're very well. Hello, <laughs> Tim Doon. Hello, morning, Fai. How are you doing morning. today? Amazing. All Mommy right, Kachi, welcome yeah. to the show, viewers. Let's take a look at some of the stories trending today. Hello, Rufai. Mm. Beginning with Hafsat Ganduje, the wife of the governor, that's of Kano State, Abdullahi Ganduje, shunning an invitation extended to her by the anti graft agency, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, to report for questioning in last week over a bribery and land fraud case reported by her own son, her eldest son, Abdul Ziz. Ganduje. Now, the matter pertains to uh, corruptly using family access to power for private enrichment. Now, her son reported that he was approached by a property developer to help facilitate the acquisition of some plots of land in Kano with some hundreds of thousands of US dollars. Now, but three months later, the property developer discovered that the plots of land he wanted and had paid the family for had been allocated to other buyers and then he requested to be refunded. Well, regardless of this, you see, uh, Mrs. Ganduje, you know, was in London, actually, for her youngest son's graduation. She shunned the invitation. And the truth is, she could be arrested if she refuses to report for questioning, because unlike her husband, who by virtue of his office, enjoys immunity from arrest and prosecution, she enjoys no constitutional immunity. This also goes beyond a personal family issue. This is, this is, a fraud situation and as long as the EFCC is involved the parties are treated as individuals and investigated as such well you've just made my point for me Kachi I don't know how anybody gets to shun an invitation from the EFCC I would not advise that you will be arrested you will be hauled before the EFCC and you will be made to account for whatever that um, petition against you contains. And also another great point that you made, Kachi, is about immunity. We tend to have our first ladies with a sort of overstated sense of importance. They're actually not elected officials. Yeah. And again, she would be well advised to actually go to EFCC and explain herself. It's somewhat embarrassing, I'm sure, for the family that this has happened. She hasn't been, you know, this petition was not filed by a random person, a stranger. It was filed by her own son. It's, I'm, I'm sure it'll be somewhat messy over Salah or whenever next door family, you know, gets together, there might be some tension. But I guess her son is just not prepared to take the fall for this. In our culture in Nigeria, it's highly unusual mm -hmm. to drop one's own mother in it in this fashion. So I can't begin to imagine yes. the situation situation yes. in that family that has caused this. But the Kano State um, government representative said he doesn't know anything about this and has not made any comments. So let's hope this is just a rumor because it's ugly. Well, I, there is a popular Yoruba song. I, I don't know whether it's something we can do on international TV. Oh, yeah, try, try, so try, Dr. Bassi. You know, let's I, I, hear it. I love yes, to hear it. And it goes as follows. Abe Urechu La Bule. Abe Urechu La Bule. Valenta Boy. Aurenta. Go, go, go. Okay. Go, go, go. You know, this is anyway. I mean, I'm sure those who understand the language, you know, will get the message. But it, it is as follows. You know, the governor himself had been previously accused of uh, corruption. Uh, well, that was not eventually proven, but in Nigeria, it's popularly known as Gandola. Mm -hmm. Now, within the same family, you have the wife uh, now being accused of making away with money that was paid into her account by her own son. The amount, we're told, is $35 million. Okay, where did the son himself, Abdulaziz, where did he get the money from? It was, this money was meant as a, some kind of facilitation commission. I don't know what the level of education of uh, Mr. Abdulaziz Ganduje is, but he was supposed to facilitate, you know, um, the allocation of land to some people, and then this 35 million uh, was given to her mom, maybe to keep in trust for, for her, uh, for him, and then it was discovered that these specific plots of land had now been allocated uh, to some other people. And you now have the son taking the mother, reporting the mother to the EFCC. So it's a typical, you know, uh, uh, situation that is uh, fully described by that Yoruba song uh, that I was trying to uh, sing. I'm not uh, a singer. I talk. 
Anyway, so she well, was, tried, she was not, Dr. Abati, you did well. <laughs> she was not invited by the EFCC last week, Thursday. But she snubbed the EFCC. But what we would like to know is, okay, maybe she had some other engagements. Did her lawyers go there? Because in standard situation, our lawyers could have gone there to make representations on her behalf. Because she was then seen that same weekend, uh, that weekend, last weekend, in London, attending the graduation of uh, another son uh, who was uh, taking a BSc uh, in, uh, uh, from a British uh, university. But however, it looks messy. It's not good for the governor's image uh, that now, you know, all these uh, messy details have become uh, a family affair within the Gandhiji family. So the embarrassment really is uh, on top of, uh, on the head of uh, Governor Gandhiji. But the EFCC, yes, the matter having been brought uh, before the EFCC, we hope that the EFCC will do due diligence. It doesn't mean that the EFCC investigating a particular matter uh, means automatically that the person is guilty. So I think Mrs. Gandhiji yes. is also entitled to the benefit of the doubt. So we should not, with regard to her, engage in trial by media. You know, there may, they, they may have been some miscommunication between mother and son. But I can understand why Nigerians are really excited about this uh, because of uh, Governor Gandhiji's own uh, public uh, persona and also how people have become very sensitive about how families in government uh, conduct themselves. I mean, Abdulaziz uh, Gandhiji, as far as we are concerned, does not work for the Ministry of, uh, of Lands, uh, uh, as far as we know, in Kano State. So how did he become uh, a facilitator of uh, land allocation? Even if his father, under the purview of the Land Use Act, uh, you know, holds land in trust for the people of uh, Kano State. The children of privileged people should go and look for proper work. That's why they've been given uh, education. Too many governors, too many ministers have their children hanging around, you know, are not going to earn a living. They should not be facilitators. They should build themselves up into professionals, into productive citizens. Because sooner or later, that position, the tenure of the father, of the uncle, of the minister, would end. And they will have to learn to earn a living and not constitute themselves into children, spoiled children of privilege. So for me, I think the formative question we should ask is, how did Nigeria get here as a country? In this same country, we had people that led the eastern region, Michael Okwara. And when he left being the premier, he controlled like four or five states now. And when he left being the premier, it was said that Michael Okwara was stuck broke. Today, we can't say the same about any governor. Averagely, any governor leaves a position, he becomes a billionaire. And this is the one we've heard. What about other that are going on that we don't even know about? So the question is, how did Nigeria get to this point where you democratically elect a governor? All of a sudden, his son starts to appropriate land matters in the state and start to put the money in the account of his mother and start to collect land fees. So you ask, how did the nation become like this? Because I don't want to cherry pick. It's not only Governor Ganguji. Go through all the states. You will see cases like this. People close. This one, we are even thankful it's his son. How about the role of girlfriends and wives in matters like this? And the role of slave mamas. Because now, Nigeria has become a country where you can create a special office of the slave mama to the governor. <laughs> My goodness. It is that bad. I mean, I, I try it to hold that laugh. No, <laughs> but it's true. That's the nation we have become. It is that you will be surprised the role slave mamas play in influencing governments. It is a failure of the system. It has become a night of long knives. A country where you can't have forthrightness and uprightness any longer. Amidst all of this, people are suffering. No access to health care. Kachi, people are dying of jaundice in this country. But please don't let us demonize slave mamas. They bring something to the table that is special. 
in the other room department. Oh, God. So please oh. do not do not demonize them. Uh, no, they they I, also help uh, to make sure okay. that uh, you know the public official is in a good state of health with the kind of spe they are special advisors other room. No, you know, okay, suppose we've always want. had courtesans, haven't we? Yes. In courts all over the world. So that's what a slave mama yeah. is in this context. Yeah, but but are the slave mamas yeah. democratically elected? No, 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 no. please not. do not put them down. They, they, they <laughs> no, that's when it becomes an issue, when you put out, put them in public offices to oversee public funds. But they decide public offices. How many of them are in public offices? They decide Please, what uh, can she take another best. topic? I'm defending. These are special. <laughs> <guys. laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we have just a minute before we head out to a quick break. But quickly, a footage released by um, AIT News has displayed the moment the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad, Abu Bakr III, allegedly snubbed the Lagos, snubbed the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Samuel at a conference. So the big question is, did he or did he not snub the Lagos State Governor. We're going to have that video immediately. We're back from this quick break. You're still watching What's Trending, and we'll be back with some more stories. You're welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Your Eyes News Channel. We're still on What's Trending, speaking about the alleged snub that happened between the Sultan of Sokoto and the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Samolu. Now, this event happened during the 2021 Leadership Conference and Awards, where the Sultan of Sokoto was seen exchanging pleasantries with dignitaries and the Vice President, Yemi Osibajo. Now, when the Sultan of Sokoto reaches out to, you know, other people, he's seen shaking hands, but when it comes to the turn of the governor, that's Governor Samulu, he refused to exchange a pleasantry with the governor, despite Governor Babajide Samulu stretching out his fist which also has been seen as the normal greeting, you know, since the coronavirus pandemic. Well, this video has elicited various reactions online, as many gave it different interpretations. Now, like I said, there's been various reactions to this. Some people believe there was no snub at all, and this was just a royal greeting. Others say this may be related to the state value added tax. Uh, that's the VAT bill, which is now law in Lagos State. Some others still believe that it could be related to the recent signing of the controversial, you know, anti-grazing bills into law. And many northern leaders have frowned at the signing of the bill into law. That's by, by Governor Wike of River State and Samuel Lu, who followed suit. In fact, Ogun State just passed their first and second reading as well. So they believe that this is just going to put the northern region in a financial distressed position and a disadvantaged position as well. Thanks for that, Kachi, because I was actually wondering what reason would the Sultan of Sokoto have to snub the governor of Lagos? So you've given me some options. But I do hope that that's not the case. However, I suspect that it might be the case, because since the story has gone viral, mm. there has been no statement from the Sultan of Sokoto. And I would imagine that if no snub actually happened, the Sultan of Sokoto will be quick to, you know, dispel that speculation. Silence speaks volumes. Well, I mean, pictures mm. and images uh, Thank also. You for that, pictures and images also speak volumes. Uh, so maybe it's on the basis of that people will say, "Oh, you know, the Sultan uh, shook hands with other people; he didn't shake hands with others." But you know, uh, we don't really know what probably transpired. It happens, you know, when you interact with people. In a moment, you know, there is a variety in terms of uh, uh, response. Uh, that sign by the governor of uh, Lagos State uh, is like saying Ranka did this, uh, you know. And do we know whether his eminence uh, said one or two things like, oh, governor, how are you? And all that. And then for a moment, he probably, you know, uh, didn't shake his hands. Uh, but people are making capital out of it uh, because they say, oh, why would he shake other people's hands? And all that, which is ironic at a time when, in fact, we should be saying uh, that the sultan, his eminence, do not even shake anybody's hands at all in the context of uh, COVID-19. Uh, uh, you could see it's like there's some conversation between the two of them right there on the screen. The governor of uh, Lagos State is a gentleman. He's a very respectful uh, uh, person, very polite. Yes. And his eminence, uh, the Sultan of Sokoto, the 20th Sultan of Sokoto, Mohammed Saad Abubakar, uh, the third, is also uh, a gentleman, a bridge builder, a man uh, who has been promoting the cause of peace and solidarity and connections across their communities. 
Uh, Nigerians like to interpret uh, everything. Social media has turned everybody into a, a four-minute intellectual. You know, there's nothing that uh, Nigerians cannot analyze once they have access to, you know, one miserable uh, 10,000 naira phone and it's a smartphone. Oh, they, uh, every picture is subjected to opinions, including <laughs> opinions by persons who do not even understand what they are talking about. So I think we should restrain ourselves from trying to make a big capital out of this or trying to uh, cause any kind of, uh, you know, uh, rift between Lagos and, uh, you know, the caliphate. I don't think there is a problem there. I really don't think so. From the little that I know about the two leaders involved. At this point in time, Kachi, in our national life, this is not the time for snobbery. We all must come together because the issues facing us is much bigger than those issues that want to divide us. So we must come together. A picture is worth a thousand words. I'll put that caveat. And when you see the reaction of the governor, it tells it all. But even if there was snobbery or no snobbery, we need to come together. Please, across board, we need to come together. We have issues of open grazing facing yeah, us. You're right. We have so many issues of banditry and insecurity in general. And Lagos will work yeah. with Sokoto. Sokoto will work with Kwara. Kwara will work with Ekiti. That's how we can build a stronger nation. But the governor's reaction right. was epic. He felt let down, no? Kachi, let's look at Which that. Which is why that should well. be addressed. He felt let down, no? I think he's old. Because that. he even opened his mouth. There's something in Yoruba they yeah. call Yanu. Yeah, I'm <laughs> you good, open like, your you know, heart. It should be Yanu. addressed. So I think both of them should settle things out. If this is making the rounds, mm -hmm. they should reach out to each other and bring about peace and unity. But trust me, that go the governor's momentary action was that of surprise, that ah, ah. And you know that's a very ah, Yoruba expression. I'm shocked. And at the same breath, he shook somebody mm. else. It's not okay. It's not okay. It doesn't look well. It's simply but not please, okay. Yeah, let's all close good. around. Well, let's quickly take a look at our final story. Before we have to head out today now following alleged members of the indigenous people of biafra's eastern security network esn reportedly attacking a school in Imo state earlier this week stopping students from writing their junior secondary school examination and also setting motorcycles belonging to staff and students in fire now the leaders within the camp have come out to sit, distance themselves from this attack saying that they believe there are certain people staging sit at home orders in various parts of the eastern region with without their consent and as such they have nothing to do with this now the whole idea of the city order was you know pulled together to, su to support the release of their arrested leader that's an amdi kanu uh, a former chairman as well of the national human rights commission you know uh, professor chidi odinkalu has actually described this acts of some ipo militants or alleged ipo militants now who invaded this school as just complete madness in fact reactions to this sit at home order in general have been very negative with people saying their states like Lagos, for instance, raising entrepreneurs just around Nigeria who are contributing so much money to the economy. Meanwhile, in the southeast, people are being forced to sit at home and do nothing. It's counterproductive. It really is. And this is it makes my point for me about the previous story. When a story makes the rounds, you must quickly clarify. And it's important that IPOP has done this and has distanced themselves from this, what um, Chidi Odinkalu described as madness. And I completely agree with the word that he used. And I, I feel my heart goes out to the youth in this country. We just had a, an interview with um, Dr. Wadi Babalakin about Unilag. And I feel for the students there. My heart bleeds for them. You look at what's going on in the north with kidnappers and killers stopping students going to school. And then in the east, you have this, I don't know what they are, some group that's gone off on a tangent of their own, causing this kind of mayhem, stopping them from sitting a national exam, and then vandalizing their property, their, their bicycles and what have you, were set ablaze. It's sheer wickedness. Well, it's good that Emma Powerful, mm. you know, uh, consistently says IPOP stands for equity and justice. Even if, you know, that particular body has been outlawed uh, by the Nigerian uh, government. And as this stands, you know, IPOB has distanced itself from this assault on this secondary school 
in uh, Unjube, in, 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 in Jaga, a uh, local government area of uh, Zitabia State, Imo State, in Imo State, because it doesn't make sense. Imo, uh, yeah. Any, anybody at all, you know, should not put uh, students uh, in, in such perilous situation. These are students writing their, uh, you know, final year examinations, school certificate leaving uh, examination, only for them to be uh, put in this kind of difficult situation. We hope that the uh, West African Examinations Council, seeing that this was, uh, uh, you know, a force majeure, will reorganize that exam, maybe find a way of making sure that those students do not lose out, uh, you know, from that particular exam that they were denied the opportunity to take. They shouldn't suffer for something that is uh, uh, entirely uh, beyond their control. That, for me, is a big issue. And as regards IPOB, IPOB may have distanced itself from this, but in neighboring uh, Anambra State, Governor Willie Obiano, you know, this week, led a protest against IPOB because of the uh, Sita mm -hmm. Tomoda, uh, Monday, every Monday, Sita Tomoda. And the governor was saying, in fact, anybody that does not, does not open his or her shop will be sanctioned uh, by the state. So this is the situation in which we have found ourselves. But what is responsible for all of this? Injustice in Nigeria, disaffection in Nigeria, uh, protests by, uh, you know, aggrieved persons. And that's the big picture that government must look at, both at the national and the subnational level. Why, what do we need to do to have a country where people will not be engaging in this kind of disruptive behavior, burning down uh, classrooms, kidnapping students, uh, constituting themselves into enemies of education. We talk about Boko Haram in the north, as it is. We are beginning to develop a, another version of uh, Boko Haram in the south. I will be going to schools uh, to disrupt uh, school activities. That's a sad story of a country that says it has a huge collection of diamonds and would like to compete in the future. So for me, IPOP, IPOP didn't do it. They, they, have, they have come out to say they didn't do it. IPOP has come out to, IPOP has come out to say they didn't do it. The question is, then who did it? We can't live in a country where some group somewhere will come and disrupt examinations of our students. We must find those that did that and bring mm. them to book. I am scared at the systemic attack on education all over the country. Something needs to be done. It is not a good omen. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, uh, Kachi. But just before we go, I'd like to draw your attention to a message that was just sent to me by uh, the Commissioner of Information, Lagos State, Benga Motosho. And it is titled Video Sultan did not snub Governor Sonwulu. And, uh, you know, the statement goes on and on. But the, uh, the main message is that there was no sobriety and that the members of the public should disregard the video as it is not possible for any sort of thing uh, cause snobbery to ever be contemplated from the Sultan to Governor Sonwulu or any other governor in Nigeria regardless his ethnic or religious background. Just to clear the air on that. I find that satisfactory. So thank you very much. Uh,